Welcome back to video two on debugging real-time applications with Visual Studio and RTX, which transforms Windows into a real-time operating system. So as you saw in video one, we attached to a single process and debugged real-time applications using, again, Visual Studio and RTX. Today, we're here to do multi-process debugging. So what happens when you're in a multi-processor or multi-core environment? So if you look here, this should look familiar to many of you all coming from real-time systems. But if you look here in this typical system, when, and it's, this is what we call an asymmetric multiprocessor system, here for the UI, the good news is we're using commercial off-the-shelf hardware. We're using Windows here to do the complex HMI. However, for the real-time code, you see we're using DSPs. So there's a lot of performance in these DSPs, but inherently what DSPs bring along is a separate development environment, which enhance means a separate debugging environment. So although you have a very capable system, you could see here everything's broken out into different debuggers, which makes it very tricky to pull together and debug that real-time application. In some cases, some of you are able to move away from this proprietary hardware and move to a single multiprocessor environment, you know, multi-core x86. However, this is usually done through use of a virtual machine. So however, this is great. We've gotten rid of the proprietary DSPs. The problem is this virtual machine creates still a big abstraction layer, and it continues to con to create these silos for the real-time code. So although you've saved in hardware cost, you still are using separate debuggers to again develop and debug a real-time application. And in closing too, virtual machines create a lot of abstraction between your real-time code and the hardware. So many times the virtual machine layer, if you will, is what is the bottleneck from giving you the hard real-time performance that you might absolutely need. Okay, so now let's take the same application and move to a symmetric system, an SMP system with RTX. So here we're still able to use COTS hardware, still a quad core system. However, the thing to take note that's most important is Visual Studio has now full visibility over the application thanks to the add on extension of RTX that allows Visual Studio for all of the debugging for the real time code. So if you look here, we're still using Windows and Visual Studio for the HMI, but we're also using Visual Studio for the two real-time cores. And here, RTX again transforms Windows into a real-time operating system. We have the real-time code scheduled in real-time running directly on the hardware. There's no abstraction layer here that a virtual machine creates. So let's go ahead and get started and, and look at this thing in more detail. As you remember in video one, we created a periodic timer thread and we launched that process and then we attached to it live with Visual Studio. So this is more of a realistic way of doing debugging as you can't always launch things directly from Visual Studio. Here in video two, we're going to talk about how do you deal with a true multi-process, multi-core, real-time environment. And so before we get started, I should mention we're going to build off of the same project, the periodic timer thread in video one. And in this case, we're going to build multiple instances of it. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we've created an RTX app one, so this is our periodic timer function, and we just made some changes to the original code. All we did was set the periodic function to fire every 500 milliseconds, and then here we have a sleep function so that it'll run for, you know, maybe 16 or so minutes, okay? So, and then here inside of the functions.c file, all we did is add a global variable count. We're doing a printf showing that we're in RTX app one, and that here we're incrementing the count and we're printing it out as well. And to help illustrate the capabilities of what we're doing on, on SMP or having a multi-core architecture here, because we have two real-time cores, I'm gonna run RTX app one on the first core, and then I'm gonna run another instance or another project, RTX app 2, another periodic function, running on a second core. So if you look here, this is all I did was use the exact same code. The only difference is in the functions file is the printf is different in saying that we're in RTX app 2. So that's the, that's the only thing. I could have used two instances, but this will just help to identify them when we actually see the printfs, okay? So let's go ahead and do the build. Okay, and we're built, and let's go ahead and run. So here we bring up a command window, and this is the command we need to execute to run. And if you see, it's rtss run slash y is going to launch it as a dynamic process, so we can attach to it with Visual Studio, which is, is a new feature. And then here, slash p 
two, that actually tells which processor we're on. So we come back to here, you can kind of see this is core zero, one, two. So slash P2 is this core, and then I'll launch in the other RTX app two on the third one, which is actually the fourth core. So let's go ahead and run this one. And let's go ahead and change this to core three and RTX app two, so run. And then if you do RTSS kill, this is essentially like a task manager for RTX. You can see what's running here. We have the two processes. One's running on processor two, other one on processor three, and here's their process IDs, 1005 and 1007. Great, okay, so that's running. And to verify that it's running, you can see here on the RTX server, here they are printing out, and you can see the printouts are interleaved. RTX app 2, 1, and they're counting up incrementally. Okay, so it's running right now, and now let's go ahead and attach to that. So here, if we go here to debug, those processes are running free right now. Let's go ahead and attach to one of the processes. So if we look here, we'll go ahead and find it. Here's RTX app 1, 1005. We'll go ahead and attach to that and we're connected, they're still running, but if we see here, we're, if I try to set here a breakpoint in RTX app one, you can see I set it and we actually halted. Okay, and I actually froze the first one, but if you look here, RTX app two, the second one is still running. Here it is counting incrementally. So this is a great way now, here I can step through, just hit function five a couple times, you can see app one was able to execute a couple times, and so now you have a great way of attaching to a single process on the core of your choosing and able to set breakpoints as well as any sort of advanced features that you might want, for example, conditional breakpoints. So this is great. And then if you want to attach to the other process, let's go ahead and go to debug. And we're going to do detach all. And then we're going to go back. So now both of them are running again, as you can see here. And then we'll go back to debug, attach the process. And now let's go ahead and find the second one. So here's this one on the, on the fourth core, or core three. And we'll go ahead and attach. And you'll see here, let's go to the source file for RTX app two, and now I can set the breakpoint there, and I've halted it. But what's great is RTX app one is continuing to run. Okay, so really great feature as far as being able to attach the running process and being able to take advantage of the fact that you're in, in a symmetric multiprocessing environment picking and choosing the process that you want to attach to on the core of your choice. So now we're back, and in this case, you know, we're going to try to figure out or show you how to debug a situation where you might have two real-time cores that might have multiple threads, multiple processes that could be communicating with one another. So in that case, because Visual Studio and RTX doesn't currently support multiple processes debug in one instance of Visual Studio, we're going to use multiple instances of Visual Studio to do that. So let's go ahead and get started. So again, you might have a tricky situation where you have two separate processes with multiple threads, and you might have these two real-time cores communicating with one another. So to help debugging that situation, you're going to need two instances of Visual Studio, one to attach to each process. Currently, RTX and Visual Studio doesn't support attaching to multiple processes in the same instance of Visual Studio, but this can easily be done with multiple instances of Visual Studio. So let's go ahead and do that. So here we have both of the processes running. Here RTX app one and two are running on two different cores. Here as you can see as far as the output here of the two of them. And if you verify here, here we can do an RTSS kill. And here you can see the two different processes. And here one's running on processor two, one's on processor three, okay? So now let's go ahead and attach to them. So here we'll go. This one's looking at the source code for RTX app one. So debug attach to process. Here's RTX app one. Click attach. And you can see we hit that breakpoint. You can see here one's halted. All that you see coming out is RTX app two. Now let's go here. Here's the instance of Visual Studio looking at RTX app two. Let's attach to that process. And there you go. So now we've hit both breakpoints. Both processes are halted. And now, like for example, if they were communicating with one another, now you can simply step 
between each, each instance one at a time and you can monitor you know, as far as the interaction between them. Say they're maybe writing to a, a shared buffer or maybe passing data back and forth to one another. So a great way to debug a multiprocess or a symmetric multiprocessing environment where you have multiple real-time cores as well as multiple processes and threads running on those different cores. So as you've just seen, we've shown you how straightforward and effective it is to debug real-time applications using Visual Studio and RTX on symmetric multiprocessing systems. So we did that in the first example by attaching and detaching to real-time applications, real-time processes running on different real-time cores. And in the second example, for situations where there might be a lot of tricky communications, we attach to multiple processes simply by using multiple instances of Visual Studio. So in video three, we're going to talk about how to debug a real-time application talking to a Windows application all through shared memory and again, all using Visual Studio for the debugging. So hopefully you stay tuned and we'll see you soon.